What's going on guys, Andrew Hayes here back with another review and today I'm reviewing Avengers Infinity War which is directed by the Russo brothers who previously directed Captain America the Winter Soldier and Captain America Civil War and stars pretty much everybody that has been in the past 18 MCU movies and it is about the Mad Titan Thanos coming to finally take care of business and, uh, you know, wipe out the universe. And I was very excited for this. This is one of my most anticipated of the year. I mean, I, I feel like most people were really excited for this. I, don't, I, don't, I personally don't know anyone who wasn't excited. If you weren't, you know, good for you. I'm sorry you weren't excited for this movie, but I, I, I personally was really excited. Now, um, why I was really excited is I'm a big fan of the MCU and just comic book movies in general, but the MCU in particular, because I feel like they're very consistent, you know, very rarely do they have misfire. Uh, they do have a couple missteps, but I feel like very rarely do they, you know, not get it right. So I think they're very consistent in getting it right. And, you know, the first one came out in 2008, which was Iron Man. So it, it's been 10 years Building up to this movie, and it's they've. I, I felt like I don't know if this is exactly true, but I feel like they've they've had a plan since the beginning, and you know the plan was this movie, uh, Avengers: Infinity War, and, and I, I like how they took their time. They didn't rush into it. They they built this universe that we all mostly all came to love and care for and you know it really feels like you know I'm, we're a part of this universe and that's why I really really like it and also you know I'm, I was really excited because you know this is the first time we really get to see Thanos and you know we saw him at the end of Avengers you know they teased him and you know in Guardians we got a little bit more of him but not too much and like Guardians is where they I mean in, in a actually in the first Avenger, Captain America the first Avenger, is when they really started doing the Infinity Stone thing. But I feel like we really didn't, it really didn't get start, like, rolling this whole thing to build up to in Infinity War until Guardians, because that's when we saw, that's where we saw, uh, you know, Thanos, well, well, we saw him at the end of Avengers, but that's where we really saw him, seeing him for the first time really doing something. And, you know, that's where we first found out about the Infinity Stones and what they do and what they are. So I feel like Guardians, you know, was the first time they really got the ball rolling with this whole thing. Even though I do think they've had this plan since pretty much the beginning. But, you know... And then at the end of Age of Ultron, they tease Thanos getting the Infinity Gauntlet. And that was three years ago. So it's like, oh, what is Thanos doing? What is he up to? And we finally get it here. Now, um... Even though I was really excited for this, one of my big, big worries about this film is that there was going to be a lot of characters. You know, you got the original uh, Avengers, Cap, Iron Man, Thor, Black Widow, Hulk. You got them, but you also got the new guys in Doctor Strange. You got Spider-Man, Black Panther. And then you got the Guardians are, are in play as well. So... That's a lot of characters, especially ones that they're they're all I feel they're all big players. Even and even though you have you know Falcon, War Machine, Vision, Scarlet Witch, those ones that I just mentioned, they're like I feel like the big players, the ones that people truly care about. I'm not saying that people don't care about you know Falcon and War Machine and all them because I I do, but like just so those the ones generally most people care about the most. And uh, one of my big concerns is that you know I feel like. Some of them might not get enough screen time, and maybe someone might get too much screen time, but I can honestly say, I felt like everything was perfectly balanced. Like, everybody got the right amount of screen time. There was no one that I felt got too much screen time, or I, I felt like there was no one who didn't get too little screen time. I felt like everybody who should have got more screen time got more screen time, and everybody who really shouldn't have gotten that much screen time, or not as much, didn't get as much. So I felt like they really hit the nail on the head with that. And I just really like, uh, you know, because the Guardians, this is the first time them really interacting with everybody. So when they do, you know, meet, because in the trailer they showed, all right, Thor is going to be meeting the Guardians. When Thor meets the Guardians, that's how I felt like it's the interaction between them and the interaction they kind of have with everybody else is how I felt like 
it should have went down. And I really think they really did that because while we know who the Guardians are and how we know who Thor is, they don't know each other. So they, it just, I think that worked really well. And then it just, the dynamic between everybody, I thought they did really well while balancing everybody's screen time. Now, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the villain. And the MCU has a pretty, notoriously has very weak villains. Well, I think that they do have some strong ones. And Loki, Killmonger, Vulture is another really strong one. They have some so-so ones. You know, Red Skull, while he's not the best, he's not the worst. Um, they just, more often than not, they don't have good villains. And Thanos... I felt like needed to be a good villain because just this whole movie is kind of built around him. And I think he is probably the best one we've gotten to date. I like his, I think his, well, I don't, obviously I don't agree with him wiping out half the universe or wanting to wipe out half the universe. I understand why you, 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 you kind of, I don't want to say I sympathize with Thanos, but they kind of make you understand with him and kind of sympathize with him. They, he's not all, let me destroy the universe. They give him depth, and I really appreciate that because it, it could have been really easy for them to be like, all right, Thanos just is, his whole thing is he's going to wipe half the universe out, and you got to hate him because he's got to wipe out half the universe. But they, he, he, he and while you would hate him, for that, and while he would be a good villain for wanting to do that, because that's just not that that's bad. <laughs> like, I, I would certainly not like someone who would want to wipe out half the universe. They give him death. You know, he, Gamora is his daughter or stepdaughter, and they really explored that a little bit. And I really like that they give him depth, and you know, I I really like it. But they also don't give him enough. They give him backstory, which I really liked and which I really wanted, but they don't. Give him too much. And I really like that because while you know a little bit about him and you, they do have the depth for him, they keep him kind of mysterious. And I really like that. And I just think that adds, not knowing too much about him, adds to his character and keeps him mysterious. And I really like that. Um, And this third act, I got, I, I'm not, obviously this is no spoilers, but this third act, Man, I knew something like this would this third act would go down, but man, I I wasn't ready. I really wasn't. It was mind. It, it just left me speechless at the end. And everybody that I've talked to who have seen this, they say the same exact thing that it left them speechless. And I saw it twice now, and I saw it with my dad uh, the second time I saw it, and he obviously I I obviously wasn't alive when Empire Strikes Back came out and. Um, that, he, he would always tell me that, you know, or just people that I know that did see it in theaters, that it, it, it took risk, that, you know, Empire left people speechless because it, it was just so dark and how it ended. And my dad said he hadn't seen something like this ending since this third act, since Empire Strikes Back, and that he was speechless, he was like, it was, it was very dark, and he just kept on comparing it to that. And... When it gets that kind of prey, and, and I agree agree with that, even though I, I didn't really see it, and I'm not going to have the same experience seeing it with my as my dad, uh, I could see why he made that comparison, and why some other people might make that comparison. Now, uh, also talking about the third act, it, this third act, it, just the whole movie, but this third act took risk. And while I do love the MCU and do really enjoy the majority of their movies. Uh, one of the biggest problems I have with the MCU is that it doesn't take enough risk, that the, the there are very low stakes that you don't, even though I, I do really like, you know, for instance, Iron Man, I'll say. I do know that, you know, he's going to make it out okay. Or, best, I think another great example is Civil War. Well, I think it's a fantastic movie, I think the risk is pretty low. And while there are consequences for stuff that happens in the movie, you know that in the end, everybody's going to be okay. But this one, they, it took risk. 
There are stakes. You don't know what's going to happen. And what I like is that there are so many questions I have for this. And I just want to know more. And I, even though the, I don't even... Avengers 4, I, it's, it's not, it doesn't really have a title, but I'll call it Avengers 4. While it was already probably one of my most excited for next year because of this movie, because of how it ended, because of how many questions it leaves, it keeps me... It, it, it easily becomes... makes me even more excited. And I love it for this. This movie is just it takes risk and i i couldn't that's all i wanted for this movie was it for the had there have there be some sort of stakes and man it were their stakes now as for problems and it's this isn't really a problem this is only a nitpick you know mcus are they do like to put humor in their movies and just with the tone of the movie and what they were going for for this movie i felt like sometimes the humor didn't really work for this movie that it, it, sometimes humor would happen and it just didn't totally work and while it wasn't like it wasn't bad but it just like all right like not that didn't really work with me i felt like they they just could have done just that a little bit better but it's it's not a huge problem it's only a nitpick i have and that's uh pretty much about it if i but before I get to my grade, I do want to say I'm going to be trying out a new grading system. I'm going to be using letter grades now rather than, you know, doing it on my previous uh, out of 10 scale. And while I do think the, uh, the out of 10 scale works, I just felt like for me personally, maybe the letter grades would better convey my feelings about a movie and better express my feelings about a, a movie. And, you know, I just wanted to try it out to see how it works. And uh, this is going to be the first movie I use this on. And I'm going to give it an A. This is uh, easily one of the best, I think, not MCU movies, but one of the best comic book movies. And uh, I can't wait to see where they go from here, especially after that ending. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Please comment, like, subscribe, do all that kind of fun stuff. And until next time, guys, have a nice day.